Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Jamila Payne from Color Me Crafty. Today I am going to show you how to use Adobe Firefly and generative fill to make Tumblr designs. I thought it would be really cool with back to school if I allowed my daughters to make their own tumblers. So they came up with the prompts, they typed them in, and I just printed them out and used the generative fill to make the design large enough to fit the tumbler. I'm gonna come up with a new prompt. I'm gonna walk you through how to use um, the Adobe Fly Firefly. And then we're gonna jump over to Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how I made the design fit the canvas. All right, let's get into it. I like to use Adobe Firefly and then bring them over to Photoshop if I'm making a tumbler or whatever I'm making if I need um, more of a background. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. And the website is firefly.adobe.com. And um, I like to use the text to image here. And you can use any of these for inspiration for your designs, but I am gonna type in what I want to generate. You can use the same prompts over and over again, and each time it's gonna generate something different for you. The reason why I like Adobe Firefly is that I can change my aspect ratio. So say I want this to be a landscape piece of art. So I can change the aspect ratio. I can change the content type, which the choices over here are none, photo, graphic, and art. So here we have an art. I'm going to delete out the art and add a graphic. Um, content type and click on generate and it didn't change it a whole lot um these this is the second with the graphic type and this is the first the one i like to use most is i like to keep my content type as none and then i click over here to all and then i like to go down to 3d art and choose either synthwave or psychedelic and we're going to do synthwave and that gives us a base of our design so you have four options here to choose from you can either stick with the what came up or you can add to your prompt so i'm going to add to my prompt and add with brown water droplets in the background so I don't like any of these, so I'm gonna click on refresh and it's just using the same prompt, but it's generating a new image for me. Let's get rid of Synthwave and generate again. And I like this one a little bit better than the other ones. So I'm gonna go up here and click on edit. And then you can go to generate a fill, show similar, use as reference image, um, apply filters and adjustments, remove background, add text and more. I like this one a little bit better, but I want the water droplets to be more realistic looking. We're getting closer. If you're like me and you can't draw, but you know how to describe what you want, then AI is great for that. It just takes some time to get things the way you want them. So I'm going to take this 3D art out and add digital art and let's see what we come up with. I think this one is my favorite here. So I am going to click and download it. I just have a blank canvas opened up here and it's not the size. It's just a 12 by 12, but um, you'll get the idea. So I'm going to drag in that first image that we saved. And I'm going to make it a bit smaller. So I'm a, I want to show you um, some of the things that you can do with generative fill here in Photoshop. So I want to get rid of these little yellow dots. What I'm going to do is go up here and grab my marquee tool and I'm going to circle it and I can do it two ways. So I can type in remove click on generate and it gives me three options. Let's make this a little bigger. 
So there's our first option. Here's the second and here's the third. And this is what it looked like before. So um, the removal process is pretty simple. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, except I am going to click on generate a fill and then just click generate. And that also uh, removes. So you can type in a prompt or you can just leave it blank and allow the program to generate for you. So the next thing I want to do is I would want to fill in this entire uh, background. So I'm going to select all of this and make it just a little bit smaller. And I am going to select the rectangular marquee tool. So we know we want to fill in the entire background. So what I'm going to do is click on the rectangular marquee tool and I am just going to select the inside of my image. And then this button is um, to invert the selection because ultimately I don't want the inside of my image selected. I want the outside selected. So you can either click this button or go up here to select and inverse. So I'm just going to click this button so I can go here to generative fill and type in a prop and um, it fills in the background for me. And this white space here is from when we got rid of that um, yellow. So what we're going to do here is merge all of these layers and then I'm going to grab my marquee tool and I want to get rid of all of the yellow or orange. And I just typed in replace all of the yellow or orange with replace all of the orange with more water drops. So for some reason it gave me oranges. So we're going to take the word orange out and just use replace with water drops. So it gives me three choices to choose from. I like this choice the best and I want to add something here in this blank space. So we're going to add water drops. You just keep generating until you um, end up with something that you like. I kind of like that one. We're going to leave this one. So from there, all you have to do is uh, print out your design and press it on a tumbler. So on a blank canvas, what I like to do is go ahead and um, grab the rectangular marquee tool and you are going to um, outline the entire artboard. Um, this is not the size that we would need to print on the tumblers, but this is a 12 by 12 and it's just for, for the purposes of um, this tutorial. I am not a pro at AI art yet, <laughs> maybe one day, but I do enjoy using it for sublimation. So with um, our artboard selected, we're going to click on generative fill and I'm going to start very basic. I guess so you can see the progression of so first I'm going to just type in create a cute tiger tiny tiger holding a ball of yarn and this is very similar to the prompt that my daughter gave to create her tumbler. We are going to expand on it a little bit and um, I'll show you how we kind of got to the design that she came up with. So once it generates, it gives you three options and you can scroll through. And I kind of like this one so, but I want to expand a little bit. So we're going to type in create a digital art graphic of a cute tiny tiger holding a ball of yarn with
psychedelic colors. And make sure to check your spelling because misspelled words generate some interesting things. So I do like this better. This one is probably my favorite. So what I'm going to do here is um, I want to expand on this image. So the first thing I'm going to do is make this smaller on my artboard. And then again with the rectangle marquee tool, I am going to select just the inside of the design. I'm going to click on the invert selection tool or you can go up here to select and select the in select and then click on inverse. So now we want to generate a background. So we can do this two ways. I can just click on generative fill and click on generate and allow it to fill in the background for me. And again, you get three options. Anybody has who has used AI knows that they have some issues with fingers and toes and obviously paws also. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to type in a uh, prompt. So I'm going to type in create a digital art background with water droplets, colorful water droplets. Probably should spell water correctly. And let's click on generate and see what we get. I made our tiny tiger into a mermaid, which is an odd choice, but this one's cute. Now, say I didn't like any of these, I can click on generate again and it generates new selections for me. So I like this first one here. Sometimes the text to image in Adobe Photoshop for me, sometimes it's hard to get the image um, to do what you want it to do, which is where Adobe Firefly comes in handy. Sometimes I create the image in Adobe Firefly and then bring it into Photoshop to adjust. So there are two ways for you to create for sublimation. All right, well, that's how you use Adobe Firefly and generative fill to make sublimation designs. See you next time.